Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Preston here from Bull City Reader and welcome to this week's video. I'm continuing the video that I released last week. Last week I released uh, the books that I read in October. You know, linky thingy up here. I believe it's this side. But anyway, uh, this week uh, I'm going to tell you about the books that I bought in October of this year. So uh, let's just jump into it. So first I got a trilogy. Um, I will say though I did not buy these. Um, I was sent them as a gift. Uh, when I covered the indie community, this is one of the friends that I made. Um, he's an author. I've read several of his books. And I've enjoyed all of them. Uh, he has a series that is out. Um, and he sent me a copy because I bought all his other books signed. Um, on my shelf and so he sent me a copy of uh, the trilogy as a gift which I truly appreciate. Uh, the trilogy is called um, Humanity's Edge Trilogy and it's by Paul Kohler. So this is book one. I know that he, I think he just changed the covers or the Kindle covers are different um, but this is book one turn. Book two is detour and then book three is a uh, reversion just to give you a quick synopsis on these books I'm gonna take it from the new versions on the Kindle a town on the run the crazed that wants their flesh will they make it out alive when a meteorite crashes to earth it catapults a small utopian town into an archaic nightmare it's up to one man to protect them not only from the flesh-eating monsters, but also from the maniacal colonel who storms in, barking orders for immediate evacuation. Clay Dobbs is the small-town sheriff about to unknowingly take on the end of the world. When one crazed come for your flesh, how will you survive? Um, so that is kind of the synopsis for book one and this series. So uh, if it sounds interesting to you, I'll put a link down below. But it's uh, the Humanity's Edge trilogy, book one's turn by Paul Kohler. So the rest of this really isn't going to be in order that I bought of. It's just going to be in order that I stacked over here to the side. So if you watched last week's video, you know that I read um, And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. When I bought that, at the same time, I also bought A Monster Calls. I've heard great stuff about this. I don't know too much about it. I know that a lot of people cry when they read it. I haven't seen the movie. Um, I know that this was, as it says on here, it's a novel by Patrick Ness, but the idea was inspired by um, someone else. On the back here, it says the, mon the monster showed up after midnight, as they do, but it isn't the monster Connor's been expecting, the one from the nightmares he's had nearly every night since his mother started her treatments, the one with darkness and wind and the screaming. This monster is something different, something ancient, something wild, and it wants the truth. I believe this is illustrated, yeah, as well. On the back of it, it says that this is the only book to ever win um, the Carnegie Medal for Literature and the Kate Greenaway Medal for Illustration. I can't wait to read it, but after um, And the Ocean Was Our Sky, I'm not really holding my breath. But I've heard a lot of good stuff about this, so A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. So the next books that I bought are a series called Chaos Walking Trilogy. That is also by Patrick Ness. This is what I was wanting to read. Um, but Amazon took longer than my Amazon Prime two days to deliver to me. So that is why I read And the Ocean Was Our Sky first. Um, but I wanted to read this series first. The first one is The Knife of Never Letting Go. The second one is The Ask and the Answer. And the third and final book is Monsters of Men. So the back of the book set tells us that Prentice Town isn't like other towns. Everyone can hear everyone's thought in an overwhelming, never-ending stream of noise. But in a town where privacy is impossible, there's a secret so awful that Todd, still a month shy of being a man, must run for his life. But how do you escape when your pursuers can hear your every thought? Um, I did start this book. I got a couple chapters in. Um, but then I got another book in the mail that was stunningly beautiful and I thought about starting that series but then I ended up picking up something else I'll get to that in a minute but anyway guys um, the chaos walking trilogy book one the knife of never letting go 
So the next book I can't tell you much about. It's the second one in a series. Um, the first one was out there. I didn't buy the first one this month, but I did buy the second book. I believe this is the second and final book. It's going to be a duology, I believe. Tell me down below in the comments if I'm wrong. But the book is called Muse of Nightmares by Lonnie Taylor. Um, I've heard great stuff about the first book, Strange the Dreamer. It does seem strange the Dreamer. People either really love it or really hate it. I don't know that there's much in between, um, but anyway, it sounds really good, and I love how underneath the cover, guess what? You get a little something extra special. You know, authors, I think all authors should do this. If you release a hardback, you should give us a little something extra for buying the hardback instead of just having it be plain, but that's just my opinion. So the next book um, is a book written by a father and son. You might be able to guess what it is just by that, but uh, it is dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. Um, they are also in the audiobook for it as well. If you're into audiobooks, it's narrated by several people. Um, this just recently came out a couple months ago. Neil Schusterman wrote one of my favorite books uh, of the year so far, and that Scythe. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. I might end up having a tie for my best book of the year. But uh, this is his latest book that he released with his son. Just a quick synopsis, um, there's a drought that's called the tap out and it says everybody knows where they were when the tap out ha happened. I believe it only happens in Southern California, but I could be wrong. I know that's where the book takes place, is in Southern California. The rest of the synopsis says suddenly Elise's quiet suburban street spirals into a war zone of desperation. Neighbors and families turning against one another in the hunt for water. When their parents don't return and she and her brother are threatened, Alyssa has to make uh, impossible choices if she's going to survive. He, Neil Schusterman, the books that the book that I've read and the other ones of his that I've started, even though I haven't quite finished them yet, he always writes about topics that are going to make you think a little bit. So. If you like a novel that will make you think a little bit, you know, I highly recommend you check out Neil Schusterman, check out Dry, check out Scythe, um, and the other series that I've read a little bit of, I'm looking it up, is called The Unwind Dystology. Um, that's a very interesting premise. But so, Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. The next book you've already seen, I got it in my final Whimsify box, so I'm not really going to talk much about it. It's called The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. It is the story of Frankenstein told from Elizabeth's point of view. So if Frankenstein's your thing, want a different point of view, um, I highly recommend you, you check it out, I guess. It's, it's high up there on my TBR list. So on to the book that I told you I got in that I think is a very beautiful looking book. It makes me want to read this world this author's cre created. She has another series set in the world, but you, my understanding is you don't have to read those to like this book and its follow-up. Uh, but the collector's edition of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo came out. I do believe this is only available in the UK. I was able to get a copy through Amazon UK. Just go to amazon.co.uk. That's how I ordered mine. I do believe there's someone on Prime or on amazon.com here in the United States selling it. Even though they're based in the UK, they're selling it on amazon.com. So also check that out. But uh, this is the front of the book. As you can tell, there is no dust jacket. This is just printed on the cover. Absolutely beautiful. Then you have painted edges. Then this is the side of the book, which is just still beautiful. And then on the back, that is what is on the back. Um, when you open it up, you have a, one of the maps in red. After that, um, you kind of have the synopsis for the book right here. Then there is a letter from the author, and I don't know if this is like signed by her or if it's just printed, but you have a two-page letter with a signature down there. Um, then it jumps into the book. Um, and from what I can tell, I think this is set up just like the version you can buy. Except I don't know if these illustrations are in the regular version or not. Let me know if they are. Um, I believe the illustrations on the cover or the heading are a little bit different as well um, and then when you get to the back you have some beautiful 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 um, 
illustrations, sketches that are done at the end of the book. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'll show you some of them so that way you can just see if this is something you might want. These are two sketches of two of the characters in the book. Then you turn the page and you have a couple more characters from the book. Then there's a few more sketches and then at the end you have another map. Now this takes place in her uh, Geisha universe, um, which uh, I don't have book one back here with me. But anyway, she wrote another series called Shadow and Bone that takes place in that world. But from my understanding, you don't need to read that to understand this. I think you might have a deeper understanding of the world instead of feel like being just thrown into it. But my understanding is it doesn't take away from the story. So anyway, guys, absolutely beautiful edition of Six of Crows. I'll put a link down to the Amazon UK where I ordered mine. Um, it actually got here pretty quick. So I have one more book to show you that I bought in stores, and then I'm going to do an unboxing with you. So the final book that I bought, I actually bought because of another booktuber's recommendation. That booktuber is Books for Life. She is a school teacher. Um, so I'm, I, I, like, I like watching her videos and what she reads. Uh, we seem to kind of have the same taste uh, for a lot of books. She reviewed this book, says it's absolutely, no doubt, one of the best books or the best book that she has read this year. The book is called Rust and Stardust. I have heard of this book before, but the way that she talked about it, I mean, it, it sounds like an emotional roller coaster. She got emotional some during the review. Um, actually had to stop the video to uh, and then continue it. So the story is based on the experiences of the real life kidnapping of Sally Horner. Um, if you haven't heard of that kidnapping, uh, I'm probably going to say this author's name wrong, which is probably a shame since this book is so popular and polarizing. But the book uh, that kind of maybe made it famous is Lolita by Vladimir uh, Nobokov, maybe is how you say it. Um, this story, though, is supposed to be, uh, my understanding, kind of based on what she probably experienced for those two years. I don't, you know... I would like to maybe find an interview where she talks about this, how much of this is actually based on the true events and how much did she make up. Um, but so Sally, it tells us, based on a dare from a group of kids in high school, now this takes place in 1948, she steals a notebook from Woolworths and what she doesn't know is Frank LaSalle is fresh out of prison and watching her. He sees her steal the notebook, tells her outside that she's the FBI and he kidnaps her, and this follows her for the next two years. I don't know if she's rescued. I don't know if she escapes. I don't know much of the story. Um, but this has moved up to the top of my TBR because of Books for Life and her review. I'll put a link down to the video bef below. I'm debating if I'm going to want to start this after I have my dental surgery or before because I don't want to forget any of the story. Um... But I believe I always feel like I jinx, my, jinx myself when I talk about a book I'm about to read or that I am reading. I feel like if I do that, then I lose interest. But I believe this is going to be the next book that I read just because of Books for Life's review. Um, it sounds like it's just going to be an excellent book. And I'm even thinking about maybe after I read this, depending on how much I like the story, if I'm going to read Lolita. Because um, that's supposed to be like this amazing controversial book if you've read both i'd be kind of interested in your thoughts which one did you like more do you know if t greenwood based this book on a lot of the experiences that sally had um, maybe from court records or something i'd like to do more research into that but if you know you know comment down below so that's the final book that i've bought this month and the one that i'm probably going to read next um, i do want to do an unboxing with you real quick um, I'll, sh I'll show you the books. Let me brief you, briefly tell you about it. It's from an indie author that I've stayed friends with as well from when I covered the indie, indie community. Um, his name is Andy Peliquin. He has retitled and re-released a series of his. Um, so these are the new covers. I have the other covers down here. Um, maybe I'll show you them side by side. 
So anyway, I got this box the other day. And it's kind of just ripped, so I don't think I need the cleaver to get into it. But the only cleaver I need are these hands. So it's uh, six books in a series. So we have book one. It's called Dark Blade Assassin. Uh, this is the first one. Um, this is the original cover, I believe. So the original cover and then the new cover. Uh, you can see which one you like more. I like them both, but for some reason, I don't know, I kind of like the old ones a little bit better. But uh, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to read you the synopsis for book one. And then I'll show you the other, other books in the series. So it says, the best assassin in the world doesn't come cheap. Crossing him costs even more. The Hunter, a name feared and revered by all in Veramus, the perfect assassin, ruthless, unrelenting, immortal. He is, an he is an outcast driven by a cursed dagger that feeds him power with every kill, yet he struggles against his unquenchable demands for blood and death. He follows one simple code. He only kills those he believes deserves to die until today. Deceived by his shadowy employer, the hunter has killed an innocent man, a good man. His enemies, the most powerful criminal organization in the city, will not stop until he is dead. When they make the mistake of harming the people under his protection, not even an army of thieves, thugs, and killers will thwart his vengeance. Um, and then it says the meticulously plotting of Dexter, the ferocity of the Punisher, and the rich dark fantasy world of Night Angel enter the darkness at your own risk. So this is book one, like I said, Dark Blade Assassin. Um, I did get them signed just because I like having signed books. So, you know, got it signed. So that's book one. Um, book two is called Dark Blade Outcast, and this is the cover for that. Book three is Dark Blade Protector. Um, that is the cover for that. Book four is Dark Blade Seeker. Book five is Dark Blade Slayer. And book six is Dark Blade Savior. Um, I have interviewed him for the podcast that I did um, when I covered more of the indie community. Um, I'll, I'll link to it down below. I think he was on multiple times. I think he was on twice. Always a fun interview. He's a fun guy to talk to. Um, just fun to talk to him. Uh, we even talked, I think, for an hour or so after I interviewed him just talking. He's fun to talk to. If you ever get to meet him, I highly recommend you do. Um, but those are his books. Those are all the books that I got this month in October. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I got. Let me know if you've read any of them and your thoughts below down in the comments. So anyway, guys, um, until next time, keep reading, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.